So we're here at CES 2016 and I'm with Mark Soares who is a product manager for Nikon DSLRs. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, just announced Nikon D5 and the D500. Mm -hmm. So I guess my first question is who is the intended user for the D5 and then the intended user for the D500? Sure, so the, the D5 of course is a professional tool for professional photographers. We will see some enthusiasts that will pick it up who basically can't settle for anything but the best and this uh, camera is going to deliver uh, amazing image quality of course. For the professional, the FPS that this camera can uh, perform at, the AF system that it has, the uh, in incredible ISO uh, range that it possesses, this is going to make a difference between getting the shot and not getting the shot. So this is a tool, a very serious tool for professionals. The D500, uh, any enthusiast, and, uh, and uh, there's plenty who have been waiting for this camera over the last six uh, plus years, uh, they'll want to pick this up as an upgrade uh, to their 7000, their D200, D300 series, and um, really much more compact uh, than the D5, but still possess a lot of technologies from the D5. So it's a really uh, brilliant kind of uh, uh, combination of size and performance, and I think that'll excite a lot of users. Definitely, and that actually brings me to my next question. Uh, how long has the D5 been in uh, development, and then also how long has the D500 been in development? So uh, unfortunately I can't, uh, uh, you know, provide too much information on sure. that. Uh, but of course, we're always listening to the market to try to, you know, take their feedback, the, the customer's feedback, and, you know, build these features into these cameras. And I think, I think our users uh, would, would, will really appreciate everything that's been built into the D500 and D5. And, uh, you know, there's a life cycle to these products, and it does take time uh, to get the, the technology right and, uh, you know, uh, hit it out of the ballpark. So we're really excited about both cameras and I think they're they're beautiful companion uh, sibling cameras that, that we have here. Definitely and it's you know you can't help but look at them and see you know a comparison from the D5 to the D500 mm -hmm. is the same as the D3 and the D300 right. so I guess people would be asking whatever happened to the D400? That's a valid question so you know we're calling this the D500 uh, it makes sense when you think about it right this is the replacement this is the successor to the D300S mm -hmm. uh, and it's called the D500 because it's in the generation of the D5. We want to indicate that the technological advancements that have been put into the D5 also are exist in the, in the D500. And, uh, and because it's a successor to the D300S, it's, a, it's, a, it's an appropriate name for the, for the model. Definitely. And I guess we talked a lot about video in the press conference, mm. but how important is video to these cameras? Oh, it's, it's extremely important. You know, these cameras can do 4K and, and UHD and time lapse, 4K time lapse in camera. But it, they can also you, uh, allow you to grab frames from it, right? From a 4K uh, right. uh, a piece of footage, which is fantastic. So, you know, photographers are becoming multimedia uh, artists. They already are. And uh, giving them those, that flexibility is extremely important, not just on the high end, uh, like a flagship D5, but also on a flagship DX camera like the D500. Uh, you know, imagine this kind of portability uh, in your bag as you're traveling, and you can just flick uh, a switch and you're, you're shooting 4K UHD. I think that's. Uh, that's an appealing proposition. Definitely. And speaking of which, what can you just tell us a couple of the video-centric tools uh, that we might find in the D5 and D500? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you can with the D500, we actually have a couple of new features, such as electronic VR for HD uh, recording. Those are the you know the the little uh, uh, features that may not be top of mind for most users, but the filmmakers really love it. Of course, they both do flat profile. You can shoot flat profile with both uh, 4K UHD time lapse. Like I mentioned before, the D500 actually has another feature, which is the active D lighting mode that you can uh, set it to uh, in, in uh, HD video recording as well. And both of them can output simultaneously via the HDMI port to record to an external recorder with no uh, time limits and also to the in-camera memory card slot. And I'll mention this because it's very exciting to have XQD capability in the D500 and the D5 uh, and the D5. Uh, not to make the answer too long, but yeah, it does come in two flavors with CF, CF, and XQD, XQD. Oh. And it really makes it, if you go with the XQD flavor, of course, this camera is a beautiful companion camera. If you're upgrading from a D7000 series or D300S, for example, you'll have SD cards. So it's a really perfect uh, stepping stone, and I think it's brilliantly designed. And right before we started chatting, you had mentioned how the D500 was somewhat your, of your baby in development. <laughs> Can you just tell me a little bit about its connectivity and the thought oh, behind you guys approach, how you approach that? You know, connectivity is so important, and you heard it throughout the press event. I will, 
emphasize that this is my, my, my baby, but the engineers, of course, are the ones who built it, and sure. you know they should be very proud of what they've accomplished. They, they really work very hard. Uh, SnapBridge uh, is, is, is a great technology that we're building into this camera. This is the first camera to have it. And it allows, through Bluetooth low energy uh, technology, the camera does have built-in NFC, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. And it allows a, a constant connection to your comparable smart device. What that means is you can be transferring images as you shoot to your comparable smart device. And uh, believe it or not, even when the camera's turned off, it will still transfer images, right? That's amazing. Yeah, that's so the Bluetooth low energy actually uses so little energy, which hence the name. Uh, it's very easy on the battery life. And uh, as you're transferring images, SnapBridge will actually allow you to tag your photos with uh, credit information. Uh, and also you can add a logo, for example. Uh, and uh, it will actually allow you to sync the clock of the camera as well as add GPS info. So that's a great functionality. You can be oh. tagging your uh, photos with GPS info as well. That's all through SnapBridge. One step process, you connect it once and it's done. That's it. it you, you know, your phone will recognize the Bluetooth yeah. device that is this camera, just like it will any other device, and it'll connect to it instantly. Cool, and I guess uh, my final question is, it's CES 2016. There's all this talk about mirrorless cameras, Nikon's launched two brand new DSLRs. Uh, how does Nikon as a whole see the difference between DSLR and mirrorless and maybe pros and cons versus? Well, you saw in the presentation, I think they beautifully illustrated the advantages of an optical viewfinder, yeah. right? Uh, I think the technology of mirrorless, you know, it, yes, people are talking about it. Uh, they refer to these cameras now as interchangeable lens cameras, as you know. And, uh, you know, it's something that exists, and we have our own solution, the Nikon One system, which is a fantastic system as well. Um, the DSLR, I think, is here to stay. Uh, the, the optical viewfinder is a, you know, uh, our president said it best, it's an 80-year-old innovation, and it still amazes. Uh, you know, it doesn't use battery life. Uh, it, it's, if you can measure the, the battery performance of these cameras, 1,240 shots out of one battery life. Still the same ENEL 15 battery. Uh, it's pretty incredible. I, I would put that up against any, any mirrorless unit out there. Uh, you know, I, I personally don't like to, to have to carry four or five or six batteries to, okay. to, to get one day's, uh, uh, you know, worth of shooting done. But it's the brightness of the viewfinder. It's the, the, you know, there's no lag. There's no refresh rate. And with this AF system, especially on a D500, of course, it's amazing on a D5. But with this crop sensor, you know, AF tracking is just unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, I think this camera, if, if anything, it'll revitalize the the importance of DSLR and the importance of an optical viewfinder, a very solid a piece of technology that is still here with us. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank Appreciate you. It.